how did the beef start between 50 and Ja Rule? That's a good question. Well, I know you know the answer. Yeah. Um, I think 50 knew that Ja was not who he was portraying as an image. Um, ja, you know, Jehovah Witness. Jehovah Witness is not supposed to rap? I'm not saying they're not supposed to rap, but <laughs> no, it was like Ja was coming out with this gangster image, and right. it was like, that's a stretch for you. Right. And I think 50, that was one thing. And then they had some like very neighborhood beef. And I remember when we signed 50, there was something going on. I think he snatched Ja's chain, or somebody snatched somebody's. It was one of these things. And they had a fight in Atlanta, uh, 50 fought him in Atlanta. And it was just like, I didn't even understand it. I'm like, why do you keep having problems with this guy? It was like I always. It was like he was looking for problems with him. To be honest with you, right. but it, I think it was driven by this idea that he, this image he was portraying that he didn't think was was authentic or whatever, and then he had a problem with him, and it led to, you know, big issues. And then Ja and his guys ran up on Fifty in a studio one day, right? And you know, they touched him up. Um. So they ain't gonna they never got, be cool. No, they're never gonna be cool. And now it's kind of, I'm happy that it's all kind of over with. Because it, what I don't like at this point is older statesmen. Yeah. Like them. Still beefing. Still, because it makes the art form look bad. Right. You know, these guys are, are made men now. You know, like I, I love what Fat Joe's persona is today. And I love... Um, obviously what Jay represents and, and what Nas represents and, you know, the art form, the leaders of the art form, you know, doing well, you know, being positive, representing sort of as not role models, but representing the movement and the culture of hip hop. Well, right. For guys still to be beefing and still associating that and dragging that back in, and not on the older statesman level, the younger guys should be doing that. That's cool. But like the older guys, man, you you in your forties, bro. Right. I mean, why are you? T what are you talking about? I mean, you got kids at home, you got wives, you got. We already know this is not what it is. So why are you doing that? I don't like that. But look, it's also none of my business. Um, but I do always feel like, like hip hop, the business of hip hop culture is something that um, I carry with me. So I do have an opinion on it. Where, where some people would say, Steve, it's not your business. Keep right. doing your thing. Do you remember when uh, 50 crashed the stage with Hove, Diddy, and T.I.? Yeah. Um, 50's a wild boy, man. <laughs> he, he's a wild man, boy. Man, he don't mind beefing with anybody. He, he doesn't mind beefing with anybody. He likes that thing. He, 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 he loves it, in fact. I think he wants he, the attention from it. He understands what that brings. The best thing to do is to ignore him. Okay. If you ignore him, then it's over with. Because he really is doing it for the attention, the attention of it. Um, and by the way, that's fine. It's a great business tactic. Right. You know, because it does bring a lot of attention. I just think there's a, but like for him now, I mean, this guy's such a successful producer. I don't think he, he needs to do any right. of that. He's a businessman. Right. I don't think he needs to, he needs to do that. And he's talented, man. If the thing, people like like power in those shows, the the BMF yeah, shows. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you something right now. If, this is where you hear it first. If that guy, with his real talent, is comedy. Oofy. Oh yeah. When he takes what he does in production and apply that to comedy, it's over with. He's that talented. Wow. That that's his thing. Comedy. Part of the the package of talking about rebranding. We mm -hmm. had to. Reebok was skips. This is gonna be very good. You you know what skips are? And people, I don't wear those. Are, those are skips. Yeah, yeah. yeah you don't want to wear you, those. Right, right. You skip those and find something else. You skip something, and find something else. Those are Reeboks. We had to rebrand that. Part of it was um, this R, changing the letters to RBK. Okay. Um, Jay Z obviously, and and Fifty Cent, and all of that stuff. And then it was. AI and Jada Kiss. So we, we did work around AI and Jada Kiss. We did another spot with, um, uh, Stevie Francis and Scarface at the right. time. Yeah. Uh, ver, ver, that wasn't as successful, but we were doing this thing to fuse music and sport together. Cause my whole thing was like every rapper wanted to be a basketball player and basketball player wanted to be a rapper. Mm -hmm. And, um, that was, that's less true than it was back then, uh, today. But because of that, I wanted to create 
marketing and advertising around that fusion. And that was the way we rebranded Reebok. Right. How were you able to convince Jay-Z uh, to create a sneaker with, uh, with Reebok? It wasn't really hard to convince him. Nike at the time didn't believe in music as performed. Nike was very um, disciplined to its manifesto about athletes and performance. They wouldn't mess around with anybody else. So an artist, the most you can get from Nike was some free sneakers. Right. They wouldn't do business with you. There was no commercial opportunity. And Jay-Z knew, like the great ones do, that he was moving the culture. Okay? So when he told everybody we're wearing button-up shirts, we're going to change clothes, that was happening. If he did a pair of sneakers with Reebok, forget Reebok's uh whatever they were if he puts his name next to it they're gonna buy his sneakers right and he didn't have any self-doubt that forget nike i could do this with them and by the way while he was wearing his sneakers and selling his sneakers sometimes he'd wear nike too and he's like people ain't gonna believe me if all i did was wear my sneakers i gotta show them that i choose to wear my sneakers like I choose to wear those. Oh, it's an okay. option. But like this whole idea, like only wear your sneakers. He knew that would that that looks fake because that wouldn't be real. Right. What's real is I do like these. I also do like those. But it's creating an option, right? Which put that put Reebok in the conversation. Um, so it didn't really take much convincing. The convincing was, you know, getting a deal done, not right. if Reebok was the right. And he company. wasn't an ambassador, he was a partner. No, Jay Z's not the ambassador of anything except himself. <laughs> he was a partner. He was a 50 50 partner. How do you, uh, that's the thing. Because a lot of times these brands will throw a large sum of money and, a, and an athlete or an entertainer will take that. It's like, okay, fine. But how do you convince them, like, take less of this and become partnership or equity stake? Jay-Z understood that from the beginning because he was an independent artist. Okay. So when Jay-Z was selling music at the back of a trunk, the back of a trunk, which Master P did, which Birdman and Cash Money did, Luke Skywalker did, there's some great entrepreneurs who sold like literally hand-to-hand -hand combat with distributing music. What they knew was whether they got there because they tried to get a record deal and then they got turned down so then they had to just do that, they learned the margin was there. They actually, that was the first time you got a chance to look under the hood and realize, wait a minute, this thing that cost me, you know, a dollar to make that I could sell for $16, all that money right there, that's mine. If I got a record deal, I'd be getting a right. small fraction of that. Once they learned, once you learn that, once you see that, you can't unsee that. Right. So betting on yourself, becomes the right thing to do because that's where the margin is. Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because you know we like to do something before two something.